Bruvier, the CM, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at this M1 A2 TOS 2 kit from Academy. Okay, let's do a quick intro on this kit. Okay, uh, Academy, um, not the sort of first manufacturer you think of in terms of really good kits, but I'm, I'm going to show you otherwise. In fact, this uh, M1 A2, the Tusk kit in 35th, this might be the very best um, kit that's available um, for a number of reasons. So we'll have a look at that part. I'm going to go through the build obviously later, but this first part is going to be a review. Try and make the review short and sweet, try and stick to some points. Let's have a look at what's inside the box. Also, a uh, quick shout out to my Patreon, Henry, for choosing this as the next project. Okay, let's get started with this. Okay, so quickly in the box, of course, we've got this uh, artwork and the indication we've got three options to build from this one kit. And a number of schemes on the side, indication of foot wedge parts, so that side there. Color call outs on the side are numerous. We've got everything here. We've got uh, Humbrol, uh, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Color, Life Color, Testers, which I think might be defunct now, Ravel, Vallejo. Model colour and model layer. So, actually, what's missing? Tammy is missing. Incredible, isn't it? Tammy is the one we all see, but... Okay, that's not called out. Anyways, besides that, let's check what's inside here. Get this lid open. It's quite a big box. Check your part lists. Well, I've never done that ever. Maybe I should start. Okay, so sprues. Okay, one bag there with two sprues in it. Another one with three sprues in it, including transparencies. Another two sprues in there. And another one with three or four sprues in there. In the bottom of the bag, we have some tracks. A massive instruction booklet which is in three or four parts. Need to check that, need to have a look at that in advance. Uh, color call out, have a look at that later. Uh, and there's the stickers. So let's get these bags open, have a look and see these parts in detail. Okay, let's have a look at these sprues very quickly. Got two off of these, which are obviously roll wheels and suspension arms. Right away, anyways, all this um, this kit right away, I can see it's really tight in terms of molding. There's no flash or anything. It's nice, um, highly detailed molding. Nothing really noticeable there. I think uh, we're going to find that we've got separate caps for the road wheels, but I'll verify all that when we come to the construction. Uh, one sprue here looks like details for the turret. There's the 50 caliber machine gun there. It's, um, it is actually, is it hollowed out? No, it's not, but that's not a big deal. Some really nice details here. And there's that weapon station for the SCP or the SEP. And a sprue here again, another 50 cal on there. Is that two 50 cals? It is. The 50 calibers are molded as single pieces so you get quite a lot of weapons on here i'm just looking to see if there's any knockout marks or anything there might be some in the back of there might be something we'll have to have a look at on that piece there i'm pretty sure that's part of the um shielding for the loader's position there's a 7.62 machine gun it's fitted with a sight as well And the sprue, this is part of the, I think it's the belly armour, this part. There's the rear deck, the rear engine louvers for this turbine powered tank. And they are all flash free, really nicely detailed. And again, there's more parts there for that engine deck again. Really nice uh, detailing there. This is part of the turret um storage area and nothing's damaged nothing's broken look at the cupola 
as well. We've got the areas for the vision blocks there. Um, obviously, you can see that the, it's got quite a bit of parts count, actually, straight away. It's the first thing you can notice about this kit, which we'll have a look at next. This is the largest part of the kit, um, the turret, which appears to have a bit of slide moulding by looking at that raised gate there. And um, it's got some texture on it. It's got the weld beads in scale. It's got the conduits there that were added on these later Abrams. Looks really good. There's the mantlet there. That looks detailed. Is that part of a breach? Not too sure. And these are the combat identification panels. Got a couple of them. And these have got texture on them as well. Anti-slip texture on these boxes. They get mounted to the hull. And there's part of the side skirts. They've also got that wire rope there. And part of the engine decking. Uh, oh, oh, also of note, slide molded barrel in three sections. So there's no, um, well, you obviously, you're going to have a mold seam just to scratch off, but you don't need to glue the parts because they're not on half. So that's a really big bonus. You probably don't, you know, just to not use an aftermarket barrel is always a bonus to me. And of, this is, um, you know, a big difference between the other kits that I've, I've built. Dragon mainly is that this is not a, uh, you know, one piece hull. It's all made of flat sections that you need to glue together. So we're going to cover that in the construction part, which we'll get onto pretty soon. Let's have a look at all this detail here. This is obviously the um, upper hull with a lot of the decking all in one piece. Nice details around there, around the handles. Might, actually, that looks pretty good. I was going to, thinking about replacing or detailing up some of this area. I'm pretty sure I need to scratch something on here because I'll just check that. I'll think about that. Fuel filler caps look good. Looks really excellent. These are the up armor parts for the toss. There's two types of ceramic plates or these block ERA plates or whatever. Um, sorry if I get them confused, but we'll talk about that later when we choose the build. Got some optics there. Nice. There's loads of them. Right, okay, here, there, there they are straight away. These are the hubs for the road wheels. They're actually transparent um, so that the crew can have a look and see if the oil level and the bearings is um, adequate. So that's pretty cool. And then that's quite nice as well. You've got the um, optics for the cupola, just one, one piece that just slots in. And there's some of the vision blocks there for the armoured surround for that machine gun position on top. Um, okay, just have a look at some other little bits and pieces. Okay, these are the tracks. Rubber bandies. You know, I've got some... I'm going to talk about that later on. I'll show you the alternative from DEF models and I'll talk about that. But actually, I think these might be good to go. But we'll talk about that more when we get into the build. Here is a looks like a flexible link for a machine gun ammo that goes to the uh, remote weapon system. Just checking there, just checking the back side of the tracks. You know, they look really good. Nothing wrong with using rubber band tracks if, if they're well detailed and as long as they fit. Uh, final part is the very small part of foot wedge. I'm going to leave it inside the bag. That looks like the front identification panels. And then, of course, this is part of the turret bustle. And then finally, the decals from Death Model. And that was the main reason I chose this kit. I wanted to get all these markings. Let's quickly look at the instructions. Okay, instructions are in four booklets. You've got the main part here, two, three, and four. Um, just, we'll go through these instructions, but... Principally here, this is the main page. Choose which one you're going to build. Tusk 2, Tusk, or a um, Abrams V2. Uh, I built a lot of these. Well, I built one of these v V2s um, from uh, the Dragon. Excellent kit. So obviously I'm going to choose a Tusk. And then we'll... Uh, what we'll do is we'll have a look at the instructions as we're building it. And come up with a plan. So that's basically the review portion. Let's get on with the build. Okay, build portion. I've sort of worked out how I'm going to do this. Um, 
I should explain, first of all, what on earth um, TUSK or TUSK is. It's the urban survival kit that was added on to the Abrams basically only during the operational uh, phase in Afghanistan. The, the Abrams were actually vulnerable to RPGs, Molotov cocktails, the crew were getting sniped, and the General Dynamics came up with a system of uh, improvements for this urban combat situation that we were encountering in Iraq uh, in, during the anti-insurgency phase there, basically. So not the, the main operation, not the... Um, the phase where they actually went into Iraq, but during the occupation phase. So um, I was correct, yeah, the blocks are ERA, Explosive Reactive Armor, and we have two versions, so I spent a long time, I mean, maybe about four or five hours collecting references. Did it in two phases. The first thing I did was look at all the information I could find on the internet for people that had built this kit to see if there was any problems with it or anything that they you know, could point out. And there was a few things, so we'll cover them. And also, of course, within Abrams squad as well, uh, Perry did a full naked build review, which um, covers all the construction, etc. So I've looked through there, and mainly with the references, that's made me decide on uh, which version I want to do. And it's going to be the Tusk one, so not this version with these, what look like roof tiles, ERA, which came afterwards. This came right at the end of the deployment. And um, yeah, I mean, it looks great, but um, a lot of the references I found, they, um, they were more the Tusk one, so just these blocks. And I was able to find references for the exact vehicles that were on the decals, that's helped a little bit. But um, it's also going to push me towards making some modifications on the build and I'll cover them. So I'll cover a few things. First of all, I'll just do the basic construction and what I'll do is I'll fly through and make up as much as I can as possible. Basically, the lower hull area, it's um, basically the same for all three versions, obviously bar that side armor, etc. So let's crack on with that, sort of just show it to you and then I'll explain anything that I need to do, but I do need to make modifications uh, principally um, one thing that is pointed out uh, within the build reviews is that the, and I didn't catch in my review, is that the underneath of the sponsons is um, a void, so you could actually see underneath and see light through there. Now, because I'm going to do some modifications, I need to think about filling that in. The other thing that I need to do as well is, basically what I want to do, I want to remove that rear portion of the uh, track guard there. It'll look cool. It's sort of show it tells a story on a lot of the vehicles i've looked at that they remove this section because they're getting a lot of mud being built up in that area so that last section of fender of or the side skirt was removed and that that means that i need to detail out the track so i'm thinking now of using other tracks but we'll cover that in a while let's just crack on this build and see how it goes <laughs>
Okay, that's the end of the montage sequence. Um, I can build as far as this point. Uh, let's break this down. Uh, okay, so basically, as I said, I, uh, I got thoroughly involved in uh, modifying that basic build from um, what's included inside the kit to how I want to depict it in operations in Iraq. Um, now, first of all, let's just talk about the build, okay? This Academy kit is really easy, really simple, and the detail is excellent. So out of the box, you can build this kit easily within a week, and um, it looks superb, to be honest. Um, I'm just gonna show you the turret, first of all, and uh, the highlights really are, this is the most difficult part, is this bustle rack doing the photo action side here. But, um, you know, it's not too difficult as long as you, you know, get a bit of practice with your photo etch. Um, and then of course the modifications that I've done, quite a few of them. The main one really is modifying this area here uh, so that I could take off the uh, recovery cables. So I put on the supports there. And then just little bits and pieces, just built up a plaster card. Little bit of detail added onto that um, machine gun. As I did find out, yeah, these are masks that are included within the kit for all the glazing for all these uh, armoured units on here. There's a few pieces as well that I'm going to leave off uh, following my references, i.e. the CIP panels. I found out that these basically, um, these are for tank on tank engagements, yeah. So when these guys obviously were deployed in Iraq uh, in this um, insurgency, they weren't fighting against other armored vehicles, so these things would just get damaged. So they didn't put them on, didn't mount them on here, so these sort of get ignored. Um, I've covered up the smoke uh, discharges as well. Uh, I found out quite a few of those were, they were covered up, they didn't need them in that environment. And there we go. Um, let's talk about the hole now. Okay, so here's the hole. Pretty easy again, really easy to build up. Added on a little bit of detail. The main thing I added on was this section of plastic underneath um, the sponson here, so it isn't see-through. You can see the see-through section there. Um, that doesn't matter to me at all, this area forward of that portion, because as I said, I've modified the armor by removing that rear portion, that rear plate, where they haven't, they don't actually extend the, um, the ERA blocks, don't go all the way out. So the actual armor protection doesn't extend into the engine deck, quite surprisingly actually. But this section here commonly uh, deleted or they take off that panel because they've got mud build up on this rear sprocket. And of course, the other modification was using the DEF model tracks. These tracks are really easy to build up. They build up really quickly. And the reason I'm, I'm going to use them is because I've got the extra you know, visibility of the tracks in their section here. So be quite a plus point. And also just a note as well, I've left this, this is as far as I can build because um, it's difficult to place these side skirts on really um, without having the road wheels in place. So I wanna get all this painting done. Obviously we're gonna cover that at the next point. I'll explain all my painting procedure in the next video. And of course, in terms of the track as well, I did some modification on the tracks to give them that worn look by using a motor tool and running a drill bit across. Then the other things that I've done, as I said, the uh, recovery cables are in the deployed position so I've got one of them in the front mount and I saw some references of vehicles with really heavy chains placed on the back mounts here on the lugs. So I've got that detail on there. Should look interesting at the painting stage. Still got to add in the optics and bits and pieces like that. But overall, I have really enjoyed this build. Just very simple modifications and um, We'll carry on with the painting in the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. Also, shout out to my Patreon as well for uh, giving me the inspiration for this build. 
So until next time, this is the bear and I'm out of here.